Welcome back, dear listeners, to another exciting episode of GAC Podcast. I'm your host, Phillips Josh, and today we're actually having an important and timely topic for discussion, which is the African swine fever. This is a devastating disease that has been causing significant concern in the global swine industry. And today, I'll take you on a journey through the facts, the impact, and the measures that has been taken to combat this disease. So, let's dive in. What is really African swine fever? The African swine fever is highly contagious viral disease that affects domestic and wild pigs. It is caused by the African swine fever virus and so far, no suitable cure or vaccine has been produced. Now, the virus spreads primarily through direct contact between infected and susceptible pigs, but it can also be transmitted through contaminated feed, contaminated equipment, and even people who have been in contact with infected animals or pigs. Now, it's very important to note that African swine fever does not pose a threat to human health as it only affects pigs. I'm going to be walking down through the historical context, global spread, recent outbreaks, impact on the swine industry, control and preventive measures for these disease, research on vaccine development, and many more. So, listen up. The historical context and global, global spread of the African swine fever. The African swine fever was first identified in Kenya in early 1900s, and since then it has spread to various regions both within Africa and beyond. Now, over the decades, the African swine fever has affected many countries on the African continent, parts of Europe, and most recently, it has been reported in Asia and other parts of the world. Now, if I am to actually recall something, around 2019, I realized that a lot of pig farmers dropped out of business between 2019 and 2020, and those pig farmers I knew <laughs> had this issue. Now, um, I actually did a discussion during that, uh, I, I had a video posted during that 2019 and it got loads of views and I started making research, why did the African swine fever, just a short clip that I shared on social media, get so much views? I dug deep to realize that it was really affecting a lot of farmers. It was really affecting a lot of farmers. The only farmers that I knew that were safe after um, walking through several farms, um, after the, the um, pandemic, when I went back to school, after discussing with several farmers, I had a lot of pig farmers that I had to discuss with. And those who were shocked by it, who were really pained or who, whose farms were almost wrecked by this disease, were much. And the ones that survived it, that didn't even have uh, a sign of this disease in their flock, on their pork, or in their pigs, were really because they were sighted far away. Now, first, they were sighted far away. Secondly, they limited to the barest minimum visits from other pig farmers or from anybody else and they themselves also stopped visiting other pig farms so it was really a dreaded situation then because most pig farmers dropped out of the business some were wrecked and just started to put put their, their heads just off the water yet so it's really it's really one dreaded disease that i i, I thought then would have crippled the pork industry or swine industry, so to say. So now, I'm going over to the next point, which is the impact on swine industry. That's the question. What is really the impact of this disease? I've told you a little of it before, as per the local um, sector where I've actually in discussed or engaged in discussion with um, some pig farmers. But the impact on African swine fever cannot be over overstated. Now, um, when outbreaks occur, they can lead to significant economic losses, both for farmers, and um, infected pigs would always die so farmers would lose should in case those outbreaks occur or even those that don't die we need to be called to actually prevent spread now the restrictions imposed on the movement and trade of pigs and pork products in affected region can also disrupt supply chains and lead to price fluctuation in the market now recent outbreaks and global response to this disease in recent years the African swine fever outbreak has actually been reported in several Asian countries, including China, Vietnam, and the Philippines. 
that these countries have some of the largest swine populations in the world and the outbreak have had severe implications on their domestic pork production and international trade. Now, in response to this, many governments along with international organizations like the World Organization of Animal Health, for Animal Health, which is OIE, and the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, have actually been working tirelessly to control and contain this disease. Having known this, what is actually the control and prevention measures that have been taken so far? Now, before I discuss this, I must say that although there is no vaccine that has actually been proven to, um, that has been brought out that, okay, well, this is the vaccine for this disease, just as we have the um, vaccine for the poultry birds, that we have the NDVK, NDVL, that Newcastle disease vaccine, Lasota, Komarov, um, um, a lot of vaccines, even for this um, anthrax for cattle, but really a lot of work has been going on in uh, and research has been going on to put up a vaccine that if not even eradicating it but really boost the immune system of the pigs to ensure that the virus does not contain or does not affect them seriously and so far the vaccine that has been, that has been co um, produced has actually been of great help to several farmers as of recent have been even shipped to the Philippines so it's more or less like Several work is being done to actually ensure that this vaccine gets to the farthest places to actually help pig farmers to cope in case or when there is an issue and even to vaccinate their pigs on a regular basis to boost their immune system. Now the vaccines that are out of recent, I might not be mentioning them, but so far some of them have actually worked with several pig breeds more than, better than others. and. I've actually also worked probably in different regions better than the others. So it's more of like still varies. It's not yet a standard vaccine, but still helps um, pig farmers actually get their pigs ready should in case it attacks to minimize the, the loss and the spread of the disease. Moving over to the next is control and prevention measures. As we always say, prevention is better than, I won't say control, <laughs> it's better than control, let me see the it. <laughs> Prevention is better than control, is it control or loss? I don't really know. <laughs> uh, prevention is better than cure, that's the saying, yeah I got it back, I got it back, I forgot before. <laughs> now controlling African swine fever involves a multifaceted approach. And um, one of the critical measures is to take during these control measures or um, during these preventive measures is to instill strict biosecurity protocols. Now, farms and facilities must implement rigorous, rigorous hygiene or hygiene practices to ensure proper disposal of infected animals and limit the movement of animals and people. Surveillance and early detection is also vital, very vital, in order to identify and contain outbreaks as quickly as possible. Now, what is the research and vaccine development so far? I know I was saving this for the last, but I also picked a little from it. <laughs> Researchers around the world are actively studying the ASFV, that is the African Swine Fever Virus, and searching for potential vaccines. Now, um, so far, they've actually used weaker strains of the vaccines uh, of the virus to actually create um, vaccines to boost the immunity of the um, pigs against the virus. But although no concrete vaccine has been said to actually totally prevent it. Now, the development for a safe and effective vaccine remains a top priority, but its complex procedures due to unique characteristics of the virus is really something to, to talk about. So, um, progress has actually been made in understanding the virus genetics, which will actually pave way in future for vaccine development and better control strategies for the disease. Having known this, what is the collaborative effort in addressing this issue? Now, addressing African swine fever requires collaboration between the government, international organizations and private sector, as well as other stakeholders in sharing knowledge, data, and expertise. That is very crucial in order to develop a comprehensive global response and effectively combat this disease. So it's not a one man's work. It's supposed to be something that both the private and the public sector have to join hands together to ensure 
that our pork or swine industry remains safe as the meat is of high economic value and this industry is one very relevant one in the agricultural sector. Concluding this episode, as we wrap it up, it's actually evidence that African swine fever poses a significant threat to the swine industry and the livelihoods of many farmers and communities worldwide. Now, vigilance, cooperation, and continued research are key to controlling and preventing further outbreaks. So, let's actually hope that the ongoing efforts lead to a development of effective vaccines and better strategies to protect our peak population and ensure the future sustainability of the swine industry. So far, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, this is GAC Podcast. You learned some things and some tips today about the African swine fever. So hit on the subscribe button to stay tuned to more of our educating content, as well as the like button if you loved this, and the share button to actually share to other pig farmers or pig farming groups. Now, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of GAC Podcast. If you found the podcast informative, do well to still share with your friends and colleagues. Stay tuned for more episodes by hitting on the notification bell for more important topics. Until next time, stay, stay informed, keep farming pork, and take care.